Good morning. It all depends which clock you follow. I think I'm right exactly on time. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church in Ogdensburg, New York. And summer. Summer came on fast. Today we are going back to our having a lay reader. I thank Lisa so much for volunteering to read for us today. I am so grateful and I invite any of you to sign up uh, before we start emailing you and telling you what day is yours. <laughs> so uh, if you sign up, you get a little, it might be nicer, I don't know. Um, I welcome those who are online and we're going to have lay reading from this side for a couple of reasons. Um, well, Lisa, there's this nice thing you can stand on. It makes you taller. So that you get to be taller helps us. The other thing is um, I put the, the lectern microphone in front of the choir speaker. So I don't have the microphone. We don't have a microphone over there and we don't have a it's kind of cumbersome to move the camera. So we're gonna do it this way and see how it works and have the lay reading from this side, uh, right along um, with, the, with the sermon and all of that. So welcome. And I invite Lisa to come and help us with how do we do? Hey, I didn't break my neck. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, they talk back. <laughs> Call to worship. 
As the wind fills the sails of windmills and paddocks and taps underground stores of life-giving water, so the wind of God's spirit fills us and refreshes us. As the fire renews the bush by bursting open the seeds of life, so, so the fire of God's spirit brings renewal to our lives. Wind and fire, symbols of energy and power. Holy Spirit, source of our energy and power, sweep into our lives this day, that we may experience your refreshing, your renewal, your life. Our opening hymn is number 326, Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, verses 1, 3, and 4. We're not using hymnals. You can follow the words, etc. on the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, confession. God of power, you have sent the spirit of love. Forgive, Forgive us, us all the times we put conditions, conditions on our love. You have sent the spirit of joy. Forgive, Forgive us all the times we are disagreeable and unwelcome witnesses. You have sent the spirit of peace. Forgive, Forgive us all the times our words and actions contribute toward, toward conflict, conflict and division. And division. You have sent the spirit of patience. Forgive, Forgive us all the times we worry because, because we do not see instant results to prayer. You have sent the spirit of kindness. Forgive, Forgive us, us all the times we have neglected people's needs. You have sent us the spirit of goodness. Forgive, Forgive us all the times we have willfully or thoughtlessly caused pain by our words or actions. You have sent us the spirit of faithfulness. Forgive, Forgive us all the times our discipleship has lacked credibility. You have sent us the spirit of gentleness. Forgive, Forgive us all the times we have been aggressive in our attitude towards others. You have sent us the spirit of self-control. Forgive, Forgive us all the times we have hurt others by our careless manner. Gracious and merciful God, grant us your forgiveness and your love that we may truly care for one another. Refresh and renew us with your spirit, 
so, so that, that we can be fruitful and vital disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Words of assurance. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we, we are, are given grace to grow and courage to continue the journey. journey. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Prayer for illumination. Living God, help us to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believe in we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Today's scripture is from John chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, and chapter 16, 4b to 15. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You, will all, you also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. I invite the children forward, please. I get so excited to see you guys. I forget all about this silly thing. So what's going on in church today? Looking around, we have red balloons every week, right? No. What do you think it's all about? Any ideas? 
Not a clue. Let's see if we can help you out. Today is the day that we celebrate the church's birthday every year. It's called Pentecost. And so you have seven Sundays of Easter and boom, red balloons, Pentecost, birthday of the church. Isn't that cool? We have to have a day to celebrate birthday. Now, Pentecost celebrates the Holy Spirit. And the reason it's all red is because the Holy Spirit, it isn't fire, but it's like fire in that sometimes like fire spreads massively, right? Well, the Holy Spirit spreads massively and loves us all and touches us all and fills us all. So we use fire as a symbol for the Holy Spirit. There's a couple of other symbols. One of them is a dove, Let's see, on our bulletin today. Can you see a dove right here? Right here and there? That's the dove. Can you sort of see it? Yeah, see it? Flying right here? Can you see a dove? It's a bird right here. The dove descends. Like God's love wraps you in its feather and says, I love you. How's that? Pretty cool, huh? So it's with the it's with the fire all about, and the flowers kind of like fire red and orange, kind of like fire to remind us of the Holy Spirit. And walked on this earth. He said before he died. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. So you'll when water evaporates, but it still evaporates, right? So it's kind of like that. It's all around us, okay? And you're never alone. I brought you some coloring things today so that you could color. I actually brought extra in case there was anybody out there that needed one. Um, they're coloring. And that, what does that look like? The Holy Spirit, let's say the flame. Can you see the fire on there? And you can color that. And then it says, filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. You can't, right? Can you see it? Yeah, I couldn't see it on that one either. But it's on your bulletin. So, so will you have a, come and have a prayer with me? And a really great news after church, you can take some balloons home. Okay, come have a prayer with me. We'll hold hands. We can hold hands today, okay? Thank you. Let's pray. Loving God, Loving God, thank you for your spirit, thank you for, your spirit. for caring for us, for caring for us. Loving, us. Loving us, no matter what. No matter what. In, Jesus name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I started with no bulletins and now I have three. <laughs> Do you all remember what Lisa read? It's not the one we always read on Pentecost. We often read from Acts. This is from John. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but I'm now going to him who sent me. Just refreshing your memory. Lisa, they weren't listening to you. <laughs> Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you. Sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if not, if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go to you, I will send him to you. And this is all about sending us the Holy Spirit. And it says, go, uh, verse 11 uh, verse 10, about righteousness, be, uh, about verse 9, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father, you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. There's a little more. It's an amazing and important lesson for us. I love this text, always have. Uh, it's, I just find it really important for us in our moments and in our living. It tells us on no uncertain terms that our relationship with God, our learning, do not end with Jesus's presence with us. Oh, sorry. They do, <laughs> we forgot to move the camera. They do not end with Jesus' presence with us. Jesus, point blank, says there is more to come for us and that uh, we are not, and not likely yet, ready to handle. He also tells us that he will be sending us one who will teach us truth. How long? Christendom has touted that it has all the answers, taking all the scriptures, literally, I did some research, sadly, even the Presbyterian Church did this in the early 1900s. We really took all of scripture, literally, and we didn't leave room for the Holy Spirit to come and teach us many new things. It has long seemed to me that for a very long time, we, the church, got stuck, came to think that God stopped doing anything among us. We forgot about the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. See, we're on a journey, a journey of growing relationship with God. We are to learn and grow, always becoming and more uh, and more the creation God has created to be becoming more and more as God really wants us to be. It's a journey. Today's lesson tells us about the Spirit and the Spirit's presence in our lives. Claudio Cavalleras is theologian, liturgist, and artist. He is a native of Brazil and associate professor of worship at Union Theological Seminary in New York City. He has taught at McCormick Theological Seminary, Luther Theological Seminary in Philadelphia, and Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. Dr. Cavares is an ordained Presbyterian Church USA minister, and he's a much sought after writer and speaker, performer, consultant. He has written numerous books. I'm not going to read to you the paragraphs of books that he's written. He has written a helpful piece on this text for the Luther Seminary website called Working Preacher uh, section. Uh, Luther website, they have a huge website and then one of the drop down or clicks on it is uh, called Working Preacher. It, uh, it has both the common lectionary and the narrative lectionary readings. He begins by saying, 
Pentecost, a time of being both uprooted and deeply grounded. Exactly. And then he goes on. He says, like the wind, the spirit moves us in different ways, sending us to other places and nesting us into other ground. To experience Pentecost, it is necessary for change and to allow ourselves to be changed. Change means new forms of consciousness, awareness, commitment, agency. What is it in in your life that needs to be changed, he says. Learn to let go and die so we can sprout into new life. Be uprooted from ways of thinking and believing and taken by the spirit flowing with God's grace to more expansive and necessary ways of living our faith in the world today. Yes, yes, and yes. Refreshing to read this man's writing. To experience Pentecost, we have to allow ourselves to be changed. We don't like change. And if we're honest, we, don't, we like to have a lot of concretes in our lives, things that we can grab onto in self-righteousness, self-righteous indignation even, things we can point out so that we can justify our actions or inactions. Change makes us uncomfortable and when confronted with it, especially the perceived threat of something different than what we have always thought to be true, we often fight it with all we've got. We don't want systemic change of any kind. It would mean re-examining what we know and listening to ideas that we have long deemed wrong. This is what has kept us from being inclusive of so many others. We don't want to hear about equality. We don't want to hear about sexism, racism, gender exclusivity, gender identification differences. These things in all invade our culture. We don't want to have others get privileges that we feel are only for those like us who have earned them. We consider food, shelter, and health care privileges. Think about that, food, shelter, and health care. We, in our society, we do. We consider those things to be privileges. How long do you live without food? Dr. Cavallis continues. He says, in this text, Jesus is offering his so long talk to his disciples. It's about time for Jesus to go, but he assures them they'll not be alone. They will have each other and the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. Jesus' swirling talk moves in various correlations while also showing how the Spirit will be manifested in them. Jesus is placing himself in the past while the Spirit is what comes next, continuing the work of God and in Jesus. The one who is coming, Carvalis goes on, one who is coming will take care of us while Jesus prays. Remember we talked about last week, Jesus praying for us. Jesus prays in John 17, 6 through 19, for God to protect his disciples. Here, Jesus makes explicit that it is the spirit who's going to protect them. This protection will come by advocating, testifying, speaking truth, glorifying, providing the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. But in order to hear the spirit, we have to believe and know that the Holy Spirit is among us, teaching us new things, new truths, truths we often don't seem to want to know about ourselves and society, so we reject these truths, rebel against them, we don't want to know what the world, that the world, excuse me, that the world has changed and it is more light and enlightenment that we are really looking for. We don't want change at all. The old days were good, right? Can't we go back to the old days when things were good? Well, good for our home. The old days, those were the days, right? 
when the women were home and taking care of the children and cooking the meals and cleaning the house and staying there. Good for whom? The old days. The Spirit is moving us, has moved us and continues to move us into new places, new ways. We struggle to hear what the Spirit is saying in this moment, and sometimes we're angry about the suggestion of change that we stand, so angry that we stand our, our ground without examining, really looking at what actually may be a better way. We're so afraid we can't open our minds and our hearts. What might be a more loving way, a more godly way? It's hard to answer God's call. It's hard to allow ourselves to be moved by the Spirit in our lives and in our nation. We don't really want equality. Come on, we don't. We want to be special. I want to be special. Don't you want to be special? We want to be special, and we measure special. We measure how special we ourselves are against others. That's our weakness. Everybody's special. We don't want to hear that. I'm more special. Somehow, we only feel special when we have more. Caravallis says, for us, the sin of not believing in Jesus is not the lack of faith, but rather the sin of splitting belief and practice, word and action, walk and talk. But our beliefs do not mean change of mind and re, re, um, restituting what we have destroyed on earth, rebuilding it. Our sin continues, clamorously alive behind our comfortable beliefs when we don't see and don't bring change. I say hit the pause button for a moment. Hit the pause button and stop. Look around. Look around carefully and listen carefully. Look at nature and listen to what it is telling us from a global perspective and from a local perspective. Follow the science that helps us see what nature is saying to us, is warning us about. Find in your life your uncomfortable spot. Where is it you are uncomfortable? Set aside the anger. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, is there something within that discomfort that God and the Holy Spirit is saying to you? Listen again to, cha to chapter 16, verse 8 through 11. When he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. Dr. Cavallis teaches the ruler of this world is the structure of death that spins round and round with the spirits of sickness, destruction, poverty, brutality, violence, hunger, greed, consumerism, and so on. Patriarchy and capitalism are the structures from which the rule of this world lives and enacts death. The ruler of this world is turning this life-giving world into a world of death and pain. This world is not the creation of God, the world God made, but rather the corruption of God's world of life, the tilting of the world off balance. It is the off balance world that is turning the whole earth off balance, and we are now moving towards climate catastrophe. Carved into ourselves, our sin our sins contribute to the ruler of this world making us concerned with only our own pain and demands for happiness, forgetting that every single action we do has a ripple effect on others. Caring for only us, having health insurance for just a few, housing for just some, will necessarily mean the exemption 
of health insurance, housing, care for others. During this Pentecost, our call is to both live a spiritual life bent inward to find our own healing, not selfishness, our own healing, but also bent outward as a demand to care for others near us and elsewhere. It is only with a spirituality grounded in the spirit that we can keep changing and being transformed. Pentecost is a call for the church to live in the full power of the spirit, not in the power of budgets, programs, personal, peaceful integrity, or some sort of consumer self-realization, but rather it is a call upon our inward and outward selves together. As the prophet Micah reminds us, this is absolutely a beautiful text. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God? Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us and help us to be not afraid, not afraid of self-examination, of change, transformation. Help us, O oh God, to be led by your spirit, opening ourselves to a new calling, to a new understanding, to a new way of being. In Jesus' name, amen. Our pastoral prayer and Lord's prayer this morning, we have several prayer concerns. I am sure that I have not remembered something. I do want to um, remember all the places where there is conflict. Um, continued prayers for Jim Tistani, Roger McElwain, Sally Baker's brother-in-law, Don Clifford, who had quadruple bypass. Prayers for family of Barb, he family and friends of Barb Heepert's friend, Barb. Um, oh, okay. She did not pass away. It's, it's okay. It's your friend, Barb. We're going to continue to pr pray for her to be healing. Is she still in the hospital in Syracuse? Yes, okay. And you have a friend who passed away as well? A friend of, a friend of Bren, Brenda Francie's friend passed away. Okay, so many of you will know Brenda and, and know that a friend of hers passed away. Uh, I don't know. I'm not able to help you with that. Barbara, somebody, okay. So we pray for Brenda and her, friend, her friend's family, okay. Um, also, prayers for people in the South as they recover from weather disasters. Prayers for peace in the Middle East, lasting peace, finding our way. Um, prayers for uh, Trisha Amo, who's in Syracuse with, Syracuse with heart issues. Are there other, other prayers? Okay. Let's turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Loving God, in this moment, we take a deep breath. We thank you. We thank you for the voices of children, for the support of one another, for grace. We thank you for all the love that you pour out on us, for this reminder of the presence of your spirit. We pray, O oh God, for those we have named and those we have not named. We pray for those who are sick and in need of healing. We pray for those who are in times of grief. We pray for all of your children. Where there is conflict, may we sow seeds of peace, of communication, of hope. May we be your instruments in the world, bringing the fire of your spirit, and starting something new, something wonderful, caring amidst our community and beyond. 
We pray these things together using the prayer that your son, our Lord, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our offering plates are at the back of each aisle, somewhat near the door, even though the side doors are, we're not using them. But there are offering plates across the back and one here. If you would like to use them coming and going, you can also give when we ask you to help support the church and its work and its mission uh, by giving. If you're worshiping online through the church website, you can go to uh, fpcogdensburg.com, follow the links uh, to make a donation. You can mail in a donation. You can drop off a donation uh, these days. So there's many ways to contribute. And we come together giving thanks for all that we do together to, to spread God's spirit. Let's pray the prayer of dedication. Holy Spirit, come upon us this day. We feel your joy and delight as we celebrate this glorious day. With a sense of happiness and gratitude, we eagerly offer you these financial gifts for your ministry in this community and beyond. May all who call upon your name be saved from selfishness and filled with God-honoring habits of generous giving. All praise and glory be unto you. Amen. of announcements. I love that hymn. <laughs> I do. It's my childhood, I guess. A um, couple of announcements. Church cleanup day following worship today. Um, we're going to do windows in the McIntyre house and the um, roof room. Right. Those windows all fold in. Uh, Becky and I brought all our really cool Norwex cleaning stuff for windows, which makes it a zip, 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 and fun. Uh, crazy good how clean. I've never had such clean windows. And uh, I know, it's like I'm a walking advertisement. <laughs> but outside, um, that garden that's along the fence, uh, dug up, redone, land. Are you going to be here, Val? 
No. Things flattened that need to be flattened. Um, there's corners that Dill can't get at with a lawnmower because there's like chunks from, lawn, from snow plowing uh, out back that are pretty bad. Weeding in the landscaping. Um, if you see little trees growing where they shouldn't, hack them off. That kind of stuff. I got clippers. I got this kind. I got this kind. So uh, I think a few other people brought that kind of items with them. And uh, we can get after some of that stuff and get it. You can, you can see where if you couldn't mow, Bill and can't mow. So um, if you can take a peek at all that, it'll be fun. The reason we have cleanup day, okay, just so you know, is not just so that we can all have slave labor. <laughs> it's so we can get together and do something for our church. It's fun. It's good. It's good for the soul. So it's good in many ways. And it gives you like a look. You look around and you go, wow, I never saw that before. Uh, it's amazing what you suddenly go, Whoa, where did that come from? Uh, and we're going to wait and mulch everything when it is fall. We're going to wait until fall so that we can buy all the mulch real cheap. Not that I'm cheap, but we got it for a dollar a bag last year that way. <laughs> so I think it's a good idea to wait. Uh, one other announcement. Um, Paul Wheaton is asking for help. He needs to swap out, uh, swapping doors. Uh, he needs winter doors for summer doors swapped out, kind of a bigger job than I can handle um, <laughs> or know how to do. I don't have that. And anyhow, so help with, he's looking for help with that if anybody's got suggestions for Paul. Anything else? Yeah. Last chance for uh, raffle tickets for the senior class. Um, it's Lee's class, Waverly. Mom's doing all the advertising for you. You are one lucky kid, <laughs> I'm telling you. The drawing is today, last chance. It's this afternoon. So did you get my envelope? Yeah, okay. So last chance. All right. Uh, five for one, 10 for three. And you don't actually get a ticket, right? It just, just takes your name and number. Got it. Okay, anything else? Um, okay. I charge you to look for the spot that is irritating you in your life, that's the rub, and see if there isn't something that the Holy Spirit's trying to say. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ted.